with uh, Four Brothers Review, and this is uh, Doug with, um, what's your company name? Wave Grinder Surfboards. Wave Grinder Surfboards. Yes. And uh, their fins, kind of, you know, I've never seen these fins before. What can you tell us about them? Well, these fins are basically uh, using the lessons learned in uh, aircraft design and in America's Cup sailboat design. And the idea is basically to create as much turning force as you can with as little drag as you can get away with. Because really, surfboard fins only do two things, and that's turn you or slow you down. And if you've got you know, a lot of fin surface area, that's going to slow you down. It'll also help you turn. The question is finding out how much turning force you get and how little drag, how little slow you down force. So that's what this is. It's not magic. It's not unusual. This is very normal for sailing. Anybody that's a sailor will recognize this as something that's normal. If you've been flying Southwest Airlines recently, you'd recognize this as something you'd see on the end of your wing. So it's normal. If you watch NASCAR, you'll see this kind of configuration on the end of your spoilers. You see it on the front air dam of cars all the time. It's completely normal. You know, this is makes complete hydrodynamic sense. I mean, imagine it's an airplane wing. That looks like an airplane wing. It's fluid dynamics. But imagine uh, you know, the old kind of fin that's shaped with a sickle shape. Yeah. It's not something you see on any airplane today. It doesn't provide lift or projection or anything. That's just the reason is that those stall. And what you'll find is that these, uh, the whole purpose of these is basically to be able to turn very well and to keep going because it has low drag and less surface area than a typical fin. Yeah, these are, you know, how'd you come up with this idea or design? Or <laughs> you started looking at a lot of different things and science, seeing similarities? Or? Well, back in 1982, I sailed quite a bit with Dennis Conner in, uh, okay. in America's Cup work. Sweet. And so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you guys won some cups, right? Oh, uh, well, they lost the cup in 1983. I had gone back to college at that point, but uh, so I wasn't part of the loss. Yeah. But nonetheless, um, that was the year that we lost the cup to Australia, yeah. who had put winglets on the bottom of their keel. And so uh, one day when the surf was kind of slow and I was waiting for a wave, I got to thinking about why it is that uh, we don't have in surfing what we have in sailing. I right. couldn't come up with a reason. And the more I looked at it, the more this became the idea that nagged and wouldn't go away. And the more I started thinking about what might be a better mousetrap. And then uh, I started creating prototypes. Worked on I'm kind of a, uh, I'm a physics teacher uh, wannabe. And I ended up taking a different path, but that's what I wanted to do. And so uh, I started applying my physics knowledge and thinking about the design and wondering why we didn't have and surfing what we you know, have in sailing. Yeah. And I came up with this ultimately and uh, had a bunch of Yahoo moments out there. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Turning in, uh, dropping in, and feeling like I was riding higher on the wave. I sent this to some folks, gave it to some friends, and had some friends of friends try it. And I got uniformly people coming back with the same several things that they said about it. And I uh, thought, well, this is wonderful. And I often tell people that uh, when you buy one of these, you got to make sure you put it back two inches uh, in the box because it's an upright fin. And that's, there's reasons to explain in terms of physics. Uh, website, but uh, I have to put it back two inches, and then I make sure that they test drive it against their favorite fin. Five waves with this fin, five waves with their favorite fin, back to back, until they get an appreciation for the difference. Then I tell them to email me what they think. And uniformly, I've had good feedback. People have told me wonderful things on everything from a six-foot single fin to 12-foot stand-up boards. Wow. I've got uh, people riding these on 12-foot stand-ups. Florida and 12 foot stand ups out in uh, Hawaii, Australia, Peru, you name it. Did you have anything for a short board or these are all for a long board? Well, we have a design and we've uh, obtained the authority of FCS to use their plug uh, to use it for a short board pin. Oh, cool. And we, are, we have one developed. We're just about to launch that. Yeah, you can use it in a uh, two plus one setup or in a single fin. But really, what's at issue is how much turning force you want for how much drag you're willing to accommodate. Yeah. A lot of times uh, people will have uh, several fins, that's an indicator that they like a lot of turning force and are willing to put up as a drag as a result. Yeah. So 
So that means you got your two plus one and you put one of these on, it's probably going to... In general, this fin, which is nine and a quarter inches, is a good swap for 10 inch, uh, 12 inch, uh, 11 inch fin, whatever. In that it's less of a question of its length, more of a question of the surface area of the fin and the total surface area of your fin system. So uh, this is a 29.42 inch uh, area, and so it depends on how much you have in your fin system. Yeah. And if you look at the top view of, for example, this uh, fin shape right here is the same shape that is on rudders on sailboats. And that's a specific NACA shape. NACA is uh, predecessor to NASA. And this is all from aerodynamic and hydrodynamic testing. Stuff that's and been that's tested because works. it keeps its lift, keeps its turning force, in other words, when you turn, without stalling. And what that means when you're surfing is that when you just catch in that wave and you make your first turn right or left and doing the drop, a lot of fins will stall and the tails kind of sink. This one, on the other hand, will keep your lift going and so you end up floating higher on the wave. And that's when you get your yacht from what I hear from other folks, but what I've experienced myself, <laughs> which is why we're here. <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, that's what it's all about. So. Oh, cool. Well, thanks anyway. for your info. We look for it on site. Give us your website yeah. real quick. Uh, wavegrinder.com. Cool. We'd love to go out and try one and maybe give some feedback to you. All right. I ask people to try it before they buy it, and uh, they're oh, welcome cool. to do that at any of these sorts of things. Awesome. All right. Thanks, sir. All right. All right. Thank you. Good to meet you. doesn't have any cognizable reason for being other than it's kind of what it's always been. Yeah. But it's got a cord length here cord length here and then another long cord length here. Why do you go long, short, long? Because your waves and you know, your water's going by in this method. Why is it long, short, long? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. But, uh, you know, and then it's got this shape up here. It's thick here, but why is it thick? Questions? Like, keep me going, aren't you? <laughs> if people have questions, what I do is, is I encourage them to slap on their scanner a uh, their fin in profile, and they send it to me, and then I can measure it with my planimeter and tell them, tell them how many square inches their fin has, really? so we can actually talk about reality. Now, you know, I'm not sure that everybody does that, <laughs> no. but I do that because I need to be able to relate it to something. Did you say planometer? It's a planimeter. Planimeter. A planimeter is a device that you go around a circular or you know, strangely shaped object and tell how many square inches it has. Wow. So. How cool is that?